is Sophie, and I'm excited to share with you some about my project, um, community-specific investigation of a global challenge, H. pylori, in the La Araquinia region of Chile. And my advisors for this project will be Dr. Alvaro Cerda and Dr. Monica Pavez at the Universidad de la Frontera. So um, today I'm going to share a little bit about myself and the background that I'm bringing into the work. I'm going to share um, why are we interested in studying H. pylori, uh, that little guy, laser pointer, right there. <laughs> Um, specifically its relationship with gastric cancer, and then I'm going to share about the project's specific goals and methods. So about myself, um, I graduated from Carleton College this past June uh, with a degree in biology. Um, during my time there, I had the opportunity as well to work at the uh, Center for Community and Civic Engagement for three years, be a part of the varsity swim team and the club water polo team, and to um, get a start in doing some bioinformatics research. Um, since uh, graduating, between graduating and coming here, I had the opportunity to work as a bilingual clinic assistant at Minji Digestive Health in Bloomington, Minnesota, or Minnesota Gastrointestinal Digestive Health, um, where we actually saw and treated a lot of folks with H. pylori in that practice. Um, so my professional interests are um, using bioinformatics techniques in clinical and community-engaged research, uh, research such as I hope this project will be. Um, I'm interested in an MD-PhD program potentially applying to those uh, upon my return to the United States. And personally, I love swimming, running, and being outside, and I hope to do a lot of that here uh, during my time in Chile as well. So, why study H. pylori? Um, well, I think there's a couple of really compelling reasons. Um, one reason is that um, this is a bacteria that infects about two-thirds of the world's population, according to the United States Center for Disease Control. Um, rates of infection vary very widely around the world, as you can see by this map on the right here, with um, darker colors on this map corresponding to a higher rate of infection, and then they tend to, rates tend to be higher in developing countries. Um, it's difficult, however, to pinpoint an exact rate uh, globally or in any given country because the vast majority of people with this infection are um, completely asymptomatic. So if you're asymptomatic, um, it's unlikely that you'd be tested and therefore um, not know that you might have H. pylori. However, for some folks, it can cause peptic ulcers or atrophic gastritis um, or uh, degenerative inflammation. Um, and it is also the strongest risk factor that we know of for the development of cancer in the gastric cancer in the long term. So understanding that relationship um, is really the key motivation for this project. Um, specifically in Chile in the La Araquinia region, um, it's estimated to uh, be present in about 41 to 73 percent of Chileans. Um, that's a pretty wide range, um, but that 41 percent was from a study conducted at the Valdivia County Hospital and the 73 percent from a study in the metropolitan area. Um, in the La Araquinia in the region specifically, uh, a study that my collaborators were involved with in uh, 2019 also found um, that there are some social uh, and demographic factors associated with a higher risk of infection, specifically for patients that identified with um, Mapuche ethnicity, they had a 2.3 times higher risk of um, having H. pylori infection. Okay, so moving on, um, like I promised to that relationship with gastric cancer. Um, according to the uh, Global Cancer Statistics Study of 2020, um, less than 5% of people who are, have H. pylori infection will develop ca gastric cancer in the long term. So it is a, a small minority, but uh, significant. Um, and also from that same study, um, gastric cancer in 2020 was the fifth most common cancer diagnosed worldwide and the fourth most common cause of cancer-related death, um, resulting in about 769,000 deaths in 2020. And one of the reasons um, why that number is so high is because it is um, often difficult to diagnose early. Uh, again, related to symptoms, uh, not developing early on. And really, um, so it's difficult to diagnose early and that results in a high mortality rate. Um, this graph on the right here um, kind of shows incidence rates or new diagnoses of gastric cancer in 2020 grouped by geographic, uh, geographic regions of the world. And you can see here that South America is the third highest region on that list, um, following only behind Eastern Asia and Eastern Europe. In Chile specifically, 
Um, gastric cancer has been the most common cause of cancer-related death uh, among the male population and um, across all genders has had a mortality rate of about 19 per 100,000 people, um, which would be considered uh, intermediate worldwide, but is still significant. So, big global problem, um, as I hope the last few slides have um, kind of set up. But how do we actually go about um, solving this problem and understanding it on the basic scientific level? One, level, one approach is looking on the protein level, and this protein, um, cytotoxin-associated gene A, also the name of the protein, um, CAG A, is the, what uh, my project will specifically be looking at. And so this protein is um, what's known as a virulence factor. So it's involved in pathogen delivery, or um, essentially how um, H. pylori is directly uh, infecting and interacting with human cells. So it's um, been found to be associated with about 60% of infections, and with those infections um, having more association with more severe symptoms and a higher cancer risk. Um, as has kind of, I hope it's also been a theme in the past few slides, um, although this is present worldwide, it's not homogeneous worldwide. And there have, in fact, been distinct variations of this protein um, found worldwide, as you can see in the, and they have um, distinct methods of interacting with host or human proteins. Um, on the right here is a um, pictorial representation on the top of East Asian uh, CAGA, which is one variant found versus um, Western CAGA. We have um, three different variants, and there are other variants which have been um, initially discovered as well, but have not been uh, canonized into the literature uh, quite yet. Okay, so what are the specific um, project goals um, of our project? Number one uh, is to characterize Kage in the Laodokinia region to eventually contribute to the design of a community-specific in vitro gastric cancer diagnostic tool. And goal number two is to understand um, the communities of Laodokinia's relationships with H. pylori and how such a gastric diagnostic tool could be integrated into existing healthcare systems. Uh, so uh, the goal one methods, um, at this time, my advisors have just uh, finished completing the genetic sequencing of uh, samples isolated from patients in the region. So they have a wealth of um, genetic data that is waiting to be delved into. Um, we hope to dive into um, CAGA specifically to characterize that um, protein in the samples found in the region. Is this uh, seeming to match up with one of the variants which has already been characterized in the literature? Is it um, its own thing? Is it homogeneous? Are there different variants being represented among this population? Um, and once that work has been done to sort of characterize it, we'd like to move on and see, okay, how exactly is it interacting? Do we predict it to interact with host or human proteins? Um, and finally, to test those predictions, those uh, bioinformatics predictions, um, by designing an experiment to observe um, CAGA and uh, host protein interactions in vitro. And so um, the eventual goal of that experiment and this work is to be able to see um, if we can pinpoint um, which variants of CAGA or do we expect to lead to a higher gastric cancer risk and can we use that to create an in vitro tool to diagnose gastric cancer earlier and um, lead to better treatment outcomes for patients. Um, this is not uh, something that we expect to be able to accomplish uh, entirely in nine or ten months. So an important part of this goal will also be communicating um, results to future researchers and um, as I mentioned earlier, with the uh, different variants of CAGA that have been found worldwide, by communicating to current researchers globally as well, what can we learn comparatively um, through that approach? And then for goal number two, um, the community engagement piece. This is important to me because I strongly believe that university researchers are not the only stakeholders of this project, and um, I believe that responsible uh, community engagement um, can generate a lot of mutual benefit and reciprocity. So I hope to build off of the relationships that my collaborators and advisors already have um, with uh, parts of the local healthcare systems, both public and private and non-government organizations to conduct open-ended interviews, um, understanding their relationships and needs around H. pylori and where such a um, in vitro gastric cancer diagnostic tool could fit into their um, healthcare systems. Um, organizing that really information and assessing for common themes. 
And then uh, moving forward, as I said, to, in, uh, to generate mutual benefit and reciprocity, I believe the essential part of that is sharing back. Um, so give and take relationship, uh, whether that be sharing about the research um, that we are currently conducting, any tentative results that we may have, um, or building um, across networks to share back. So here are some references that I um, cited in the creation of this presentation. And I'd like to um, thank everyone for listening. Thank the Fulbright Commission for um, granting me this grant and uh, <laughs> <laughs> take any questions. Thank <laughs> you.